Hi, Patrick. Hey, man. How are you doing? I'm good. Welcome to uh, Startup Cab. Where can I Thank take you? Thank you very much. Uh, to the city of Stockholm, please. Yep. Please. Scandic Anglia. We will take you there. Grab your seatbelt. Off we go. So. It's on. Give me the uh, elevator pitch of Football Addicts, your baby. Uh, the elevator pitch. Uh, simply, we want to democratize football by uh, building the best football apps in the world and making football more accessible than it is today. Cool. Now, how long have you been working on it? Uh, we have been working for it uh, in uh, four years uh, now, and we have three million users in the application. And uh, uh, yeah, it's going pretty well, but we're aiming for 200 million, so a lot of things to do. So how's the, how's the journey been so far with the startup? Uh, it has been a, a bumpy road. Uh, we are self-financed and I want to keep it that way because we want to democratize football and that is not what the VCs want. They also want to make money. Uh, and we have been growing pretty fast in terms of headcount as well, but uh, it's, it's going well. Now we're 26 people. Is that the hardest thing, to find the right people? Yeah, definitely. That is, that is if you look at the product, it's a... Uh, uh, it's the sum of all people in the company, so uh, you want to, uh, to find the best people and the people that fit the best together. Um, we spend a lot of time on that and uh, we're trying to improve for every day on how we hire people, how we found people and how we can make them more interested uh, in, uh, in a company. And, and what's your philosophy there? Are you trying to get everyone in one room or are you working with outsourcing or both or uh, and first of all it's like the hiring process is the most important uh, so do a really really uh, well well oiled uh, I don't know if you can say that in English but a very a very good hiring process where we really really have many steps where we meet them and all the people in the team so I it's all about making as many people as possible meet the new hires. So I would say like our hiring process is about seven steps. So we spend a lot of time on that, but that makes us hiring the correct people instead of just hiring and then realize it didn't work for some reason. And that's not good for us or not good for the people, uh, for the person we hire. So spend a lot of time on, uh, on hiring process and trying to, to meet many people, even though it takes a lot of time for us. I saw, I had the privilege of visiting your old office and it was really, you could really feel the team spirit there. How, how, how did you transition into your new building and what, what, uh, what were your thoughts on how to create your new office space? Um, and the thought was basically uh, create the best office in the world uh, when we tried to, tried to build it. And the idea was to create the best office in the world, we need to involve all the people that were working there. So. Yeah. Uh, so it was all about letting the team build office together by having like workshops four and four and uh, coming up with ideas on what will make them as productive as possible. And since we are mainly programmers, sound levels is one of the most important uh, stuff to get rid of. So we, build it, we basically build it in three different sound sections. Uh, one high energy, energy zone where you can uh, like eat and uh, play football and play shuffleboard and then the work zone where it's quiet and then the relax zone where it's ultra quiet. So, and, and apart from um, hiring the right people, what has been the most painful thing in these four years? Uh, yeah, scaling is, is always hard. Uh, scaling the back end uh, when you, uh, as you grow uh, is always one of the painful things. So. Now we are rebuilding our push to a notification system that has been has been lagging uh, a lot lately. So uh, scaling uh, in the same time as you scale the people, because scale people means that you need to educate the people, need so start getting into the systems and stuff like that. So uh, and that takes time as well. So it's always that priority, um, and also I would say priority between uh, new features and. Uh, and improving existing features. Uh, that is also, uh, also a very, very hard challenge uh, when you develop a product where you should put your focus because it's always fun to do new features, mm -hmm. but uh, 
it's also really, really important to maintain the current ones. Yeah. And if you would give an advice to a, to a startup, what would your best advice be? Uh, I would say, I would say, um, uh, yeah, test and trial. Uh, do more, um, do more A/B testing. We have done a lot of things in the past without testing, actually not knowing how it reflects our retention or our numbers at all. But uh, now we have a, a very good data engineer doing testing for us, so we can A/B test all the features we do. And, and you will be excited on how wrong you are in product development and how little you know about product development when you start testing things because if you have done so many things for you, I'd say that I, I can bet my life on the fact that this startup guide is 10 times better ten times better, and then it's worse than the current one. So, yeah. uh, But also test from the beginning and don't, don't build everything from the beginning and then realize it doesn't work. Start small test and uh, prove that it work and then scale. That is what we did wrong from the beginning. And the second thing I would say is try to improve an existing concept instead of building something totally new. That was basically what we did in the, uh, when we released for a football. There was a lot of LiveScore applications, but we improved uh, one, of the, uh, one of the existing ones and we just made it much, much better. And if you look at most of the products that are really, really successful today, it's just improvement of, of existing products like Google, Facebook. But the most, the single most important thing to increase retention was to make the, ser uh, the service quick and without uh, bugs and crashes. Right. So. Uh, Which is you, hard enough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you all, sometimes you forget that. You just try to add new things and and fine tune with fine tune with new features, but you realize that if you just make it quicker, that will uh, affect affect our retention the most. So. so is that where you see your the upcoming years to fine tune the uh, user experience and that uh, work on retention, or is it broadening markets or both? Or uh, I would say it's uh, part of it is increasing the retention by uh, making a quicker service and uh, less crashes, but also some new uh, new uh, uh, new features. But that is like the main things, like be the the fastest delivery of scores in the world. We we should be the fastest, and uh, that is what we're working too hard. But also had some uh, innovative uh, part of the company as well. So we started one and a half year ago working um, with 40% time. So basically every Thursday and Friday we go to new football applications. Every, anyone can work on whatever they wanted and we recruit people within a team. And from that we release a live streaming application for football clubs oh, yeah. and a news application uh, which we're executing now. So. Uh, improve the existing application, but also uh, be innovative and, uh, and release new applications uh, uh, that uh, hasn't been done before, but it's still improvement on existing ideas, which the live stream and streaming application is. Uh, is similar to, fa to Facebook live streaming or Periscope, but just made for football clubs. Right, so again, improving. Exactly, than exactly. Invent. I hope I learned that earlier yeah. in my life. but. So and on the commercial side, how how is your uh, what is your commercial model for Force of Football and and this free live streaming service? Uh, so for Force of Football, we are uh, our revenue is based on ads. So we have been uh, as I said, we have been self-funded. So making great ads has been in our DNA from the beginning in the company. So what we all believe in is making great ads that can enhance the user experience, basically. So. Um, one example is if uh, if a Nike player scores a goal, we will display in an, uh, we will display what boot he was wearing when he oh. scored that goal. So really, really relevant targeted uh, uh, targeted advertising for first football and um, uh, improve that as well. So we say basically see ads as features. Uh, instead of blackmailing as many other apps the ads like let's blackmail the users and see if they can pay to get rid of this shit which so i don't on the contrary in your app you want to pay to get the ads as Ex a user even They're yeah exactly no no but I, actually some of the uh, some of the users see our uh, like get in touch with us and ask how why, why can my friends see 
the boot he was wearing, but I can't see that. So uh, they actually see it as features, and that is when we are when we are winning, when we manage to create ads like that, but also That's exactly try, try to innovate that. So uh, where do you see yourself now in uh, five years from now? So it's 300 million users, or is that a longer journey, undefined? or in, in five years, you should be able to get live scores for any match in the world in our application. Everything else is just a failure, I would say. Fantastic, I will park just up here and uh, very nice to meet you, Patrick. Yeah, thanks for the drive. Thank you so much. How much does it cost? It's free. Ah, thank Take you. Take care. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Yeah, thanks for today and thanks for the ride. Okay. Take care. Bye.